Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Keith here, Jesse on the camera, and tonight on the bench we have a old classic, one of my actual first rock crawlers. Uh, the actually it might have even been my first rock crawler, kind of just built up to this point. The old Axial AX10 Scorpion. Um, I believe this is the first one I got back in 09. Yeah, this would be the first one, I think, Jess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is the first crawler I've ever had, actually, from Axial, anyway. Um, it's had a lot of modifications on the along the way. Uh, the wheels on it are more from this generation of crawling. They were from the very end of kind of cra cra crawling with the Axial XR10. These are the SLW 2.2 Vanquish wheels on it, so... Um, yeah, that's about the really only, only upgrade on it of the new modern technology. Uh, we are going to go through this guy and rebuild them up. We're going to keep a lot of the setup the way it was, the way it is. We're just going to update the electronics. It has an old Novak GOAT system in it, and for some reason the GOAT has died. Um, you plug it in and it just he just crawls away no matter what you do for programming or anything. He just... He's just doing his thing. He gone. He doesn't listen. Just walks away. So it's not really dead. He's just senile. I, I think we'll say. So the goat has lost its mind. But anyway, on top it is a real thick old RJ Speed crawler body. It's a '70s Jeep with the pinched front and the back, so you can get your tires to like wrap right over the body. Back in the day, we were all about big articulation and big shocks and stuff. The whole game's changed now completely. Um, Okay, it was a lot of fun back then. Anyway, let's pop this old body off. You can tell it's old because we were still using Phillips screws because metric wasn't a big thing in the hobby at first, really. Unless you bought like the kit stuff, right? Team Solosin or TLR stuff, but... <clears throat> okay, ready? Jeez, that's a abrasive body. Okay, so this chassis is not factory. Actually, nothing about this rig is factory except for the transmission housing and the crappy three links because, heck, they didn't even have four links out when this truck uh, came around. So uh, let's flip around, get another look at that chassis. Now, this is an actual axial chassis. You can see, I think it's tagged on the bottom here. It's the Bender SWX, Bender Customs BC. Uh, Bender is a person that used to work with Axial during the first inception of the rock crawling period in 2009 to like 2000 something or other 12 or 15. I'm not sure. Um, don't take any of this for record, but yeah. Uh, anyway, he designed parts, chassis. So this is his SWX chassis, which has been narrowed. The shock angle has been changed and such like that. You can see it's a lot skinnier. The AX10 chassis was very wide across the bottom, probably four inches. And uh, he's narrowed it down. The motor does hang out the side. Kind of cool. Worked out good. It's got a Delrin skid plate in the middle versus the nylon factory one. And he's got this little channel groove in the middle. So if it hooks on a rock, it's going to slide forward, not side to side, which is pretty cool. Just kind of old way of thinking. And it still has a broken screw in there because Delrin is very hard to screw into. I know now to put grease on your threads before you run it into Delrin, but back then I did not. Okay, now moving forward, we have the Bender Customs and Axial uh, BTA behind the axle steering uh, kit. Now that moves your steering links from the front of the axle, so all you have is pumpkin and diff, so you don't get caught up going over things great on a comp vehicle, and it puts it in the backside. But what they've done is put the servo up over here with the linkage running. You see that there? Get in there, so good angle. So they got the servo running pretty much behind, the knuckles are flipped over, works out pretty cool, works out pretty good. Everything open in the front. You can see we got the old authentic axial green knuckles. Actually used to really rock that green color on a lot of stuff. It's pretty cool. You should bring it back. But they kind of went to that gold bronze and just rolled that out. So um, yeah, it's got the Bender High Clearance SWX knuckles to obviously go with the BTA because on the AX10, if you guys remember, the horn was in the center of the knuckle, would tap out on the axle, actually on these screws and give you very limited steering. Now, <clears throat> it does have the axle, axial CVDs in the axle, but it does still have very limited steering. The shocks are in a bad spot, da da da. The game has changed a lot since then. 
Um, but, you know, this guy is a thing of the past. If you notice the Kingpin, there is zero KPI, Kingpin inclination angle. It's straight up zero. So you have poor scrub radius, da 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 da, it's whatever. But in its time, it was a great unit. It probably still would be a lot of fun right now. It just would not hold a candle to the crawl that we're going to build in the next video. So stay tuned for that one. Okay, so now the cool thing is the truck actually has the lossy comp claw tires, which some of you guys will know that they were outlawed in the sport, made illegal. And uh, they've actually held up very good for sitting on the shelf for 10 years. They didn't rot, they didn't get hard or nothing. So we're gonna run them. We're not comping with the truck, we're gonna run them, but uh, they are such a nice tire. They got like a dino skin pattern in between the lugs and such, just love them. But uh, they were outlawed in the sport. They were too good of a tire. This guy does really, really good with them. It is a larger 2.2 tire on it. So she throws down pretty good. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the quick review of the truck as it stands right now. Uh, Jesse and I are going to throw a Castle Creations slate system in there. We're going to upgrade to our favorite reefs or NSD RC servo. One of the two are going to get tossed into there. Just something with a lot more power. We can now get away with stuffing a what 800 or 1000 ounce servo in there for the same size. This guy's probably only like 150 or something. He's quite old. Um, I did notice actually... We got MIP dry shafts on there, so you know Moore's Industrial Products have been kicking it out for a long time since pretty much the beginning of this hobby, and he's still cranking those out. Great dry shafts. So um, that's enough about this. Uh, we're going to start on the next video. Make sure you guys come back right after this video. Check out the next one. It's going to be mint. You will love the next build. Trust me. Cheers.